If you remember, I have a Dell XPS 15 7590 2019 model. I got the i7 model because many people claim the i9 model has a lot of thermal throttling issues. But spoiler alert, i7 has the same issues. But overall, it's a really good laptop. I use it for a lot of programming and photo editing and all my personal stuff. It does really great until you do some heavy work like video editing. Then the fans just are just blowing out and the temperature goes really up and it's so annoying and it's just, yeah, thermal throttles. And at some point, even beyond that, the screen just goes black. It can't cope with the heat. And for 30 seconds, you just have to wait until it comes back. It's so bad and I almost switched to a desktop setup, but I just wanted to give it a one last try to save my Dell XPS 15. So here are three things I did. If you have a Dell XPS 15 or any upgradable laptop, unlike Apple, this video is for you. So here are three things that I tried to reduce the heat of my Dell XPS 15. Coming up. Welcome to my channel where I do a lot of smartwatch, smartphone, smart home and now laptop reviews and I use it for a long period of time and then give my personal opinion towards that particular device. So if you like that kind of content, consider subscribing and hit on the bell notification button for all the updates. Without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you can try is try undervolting your CPU. If you don't know what undervolting is, it's simply to reduce the amount of voltage that's consumed by your uh, CPU itself. As a result, it will generate less heat. It won't be a huge amount. It will be around 5 degrees, but it's still a win. This does not void any warranty, so you can do it without any risk. The only thing you have to do is download a tool like Intel Extreme Tuning Utility and keep on reducing the millivolts that your CPU consumes until a point that your CPU really cannot operate with the given voltage. At that point, it will crash. But no worries, you can restart the computer and it will work really fine. So try to find this optimum voltage value that your CPU can perform without any issues. Um, you can try it the software out. I will leave the uh, link in the description where you can download the software. But for me, it, did, it didn't really work out. So that's why I had to go for the second option. The second solution you can try it out is have a laptop cooling pad. Uh, for me, I had this uh, very cheap uh, laptop cooling pad from Amazon. As you guessed, this, this didn't work. So uh, it just made things worse because it has a very loud fan noise and it just drove me crazy. But I found this very weird solution. It's not a laptop cooling pad per se, but it's like a cooling fan. It sits behind the laptop and keeps on providing cool air to the ventilation system of the laptop, which in terms keep the chassis super cool. Still there is heat generated inside the laptop itself, but this reduced the heating a lot and um, cause my laptop to throttle very less. So I will keep the links in the description below you where you can buy it out, give it a try. It's not that expensive. I bought it for around 25 euros or something, but I highly recommend that. But it does not really solve my problem uh, as well. So that's why I want to try the third option. The third thing that you can try is to reapply the thermal paste. Quick disclaimer, don't try this at home if you don't know what you're doing, because this can damage your laptop if you don't know, if you do it wrong or, but. It's not that hard. So I try to do that and um, it kind of helped. So let's see how you can do it, but be careful when you're doing it. So let's get started. So you need a, a set of screwdrivers. Uh, I'm using some cheap ones from um, Amazon, but you need the T5 screw, screwdriver from um, this set to open the back of the laptop. And uh, I have uh, the the MX4 thermal compound from Arctic. So, um, this one. And uh, just to be sure, I also ordered two thermal pads. These are like very cheap. I'm not super cheap, but somewhere around uh, um, three euros. Why we need this is to bring the cha uh, heat from the, the circuit into the chassis so we can cool it down very easily. It's a very small brush just to remove the dust. We have everything we need and I also have alcohol wipe. This is a normal from like mobile phones where when you apply uh, screen protectors you get these kind of things. And just to be sure I have a hand sanitizer. It has a 
alcohol. So yeah, that's pretty much it that we need. So let's get started. So we have screwdrivers and unfortunately I'm missing one because last time I upgraded I destroyed this the screw. They are very sensitive. So make sure that you use um, the exactly matching one. Otherwise you will destroy the screw and worst case you will uh, not be able to put it back but more worse or worse uh, that you will not be able to open it ever again so make sure that you know what you are doing so let's get started Okay, now we are good. So there are numbers actually. If, if you look closely, let me check if I can show you. Um, no, I cannot. Um, here they have numbered for the screws. One, two, three and four. Uh, this kind of pins. So I think uh, you have to remove them in that particular order. Oh, by the way. Don't forget, do not forget, remove the battery connection, otherwise you will end up um, getting yourself electrocuted, which is not a good experience. Okay, now that's out of the way. Let's get started. can remove the fans let's remove this one as well it's just getting in our way not up. okay there is another screw screws everywhere okay should be fine yes see wait right, we'll we'll remove them in a while Try to okay pick it out and this one as well. Ha! Huh. So there is a hidden screw. Yeah, because why not? Because you don't really want to bend this. See everything. It's okay now. So gently lift this. Well, it's not really in the best shape, you see. Um, yeah, so most of this is gone. So you can use any alcohol paste, uh, um, I don't know, anything alcohol paste. Um, don't put water and also don't put a lot of pressure because it will damage. The Clean. And now we have to clean this. For this, I'm going to also do the same. So you can either use a microfiber cloth, or if you have more of this. Uh, how would you call it bit wipes alcohol wipes clean until you see the the copper this is the thermal compound you get yeah so this mx4 it's like very small it's like two grams it's uh, such a wonder how these things do so you need to apply thermal compound um, to both of these and thermal pads on these chips so yeah and don't do overdo this this is a polycarbonate version so it's not it doesn't really matter if you put, put it outside this particular how do you say the surface but it might screw up with all your circuitry and there are other uh, compound stuff uh, uh, such as the graphite ones and also liquid metal i do not recommend them for laptops because these thermal uh, heating 
is not as the same as in C, uh, like desktop PCs. You cannot really screw them uh, properly. So it, it, there is a high chance that these things will leak out. So I do not recommend them. Um, but this should be fine. Even though there is a, the conductivity is low of these things, but that will should do the job when you do uh, undervolting and also have a proper cooler, a cooling pad should be fine. So let's first try it on a, this kind of a surface just to understand how much pressure that you should put. Gently push. Okay, that's a lot. So. I should be very careful. So I know how much pressure that I should push. It's a very good practice. Otherwise you will spill everything here because this is kind of stuck when you open for the first time. So you will end up putting a lot of, so very gently. I think I sp spilled a little bit and I will remove. If you don't know why we apply this, when we put the heatsink on top of these chips, uh, there are unseen like very small gaps in between the, the, the chip and the heatsink. So this thermal paste is applied to fix that. Um, like uh, to fill that gap and enable uh, to transfer the heat uh, good so I will take small not out <sighs> let's do this gently align with this uh, screws and put yep just like that and as I said don't open again to see if everything is okay that's the worst thing you can do back inside don't press too hard and it will automatically kind of lock for the RAM you don't the SSD can get really hot but for the RAM you don't really need to apply any thermal pads because otherwise the heat will transfer from outside to here because they are usually not uh, they don't usually get that hot uh, so that's pretty much it uh, apparently I didn't need this good to go don't forget this one So this is how you apply thermal paste and thermal pad and let's fire this up and see if there is uh, any difference. After trying these all three steps, my laptop runs way cooler than ever before and I'm so satisfied and I'm so happy that I didn't spend thousands of euros in a new computer where my current laptop is way better than I thought that it was. So yeah, I tried rendering several videos and it still goes, uh, the temperature goes high but it throttles rarely. And uh, yeah, and I'm so happy. Maybe it will work for you as well. If you have a Dell XPS 15 or any laptop that you can upgrade, maybe you can give it a try and see if it helps. It worked for me, maybe it will work for you as well. But the, th the third option, do it at your own risk. So I'm, I'm not responsible for anything that happens to your laptop. Disclaimer. That's it from me. I hope you liked it. 
if you didn't you already know what to do but if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell notification button to get all the updates of my future videos like this and uh, see you in the next one until then stay home stay safe welcome back I hope you are doing fine and Welcome to my channel where I do a lot of tech reviews. I do smartphones, smart... Um... If you remember, I have a Dell XPS 15. The 7590 model 2019. I got the i7 model.